Alright ladies and gentlemen, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to capture network handshakes and then we are going to analyze those and crack them with Wireshark and Hashcat. Uh, we're using a Flipper Zero here, I'm using QFlipper just so you guys can follow along. Uh, it has the Wi-Fi dev board V1 on it flashed with the Marauder firmware and I'm using the Rogue Master firmware on the Flipper. Step one we open up the Marauder app and we are going to do a scan for access points that it can detect. So you will see on the physical board the blue light will light up and it's just going to do a quick scan. We will give it one second to do this and it is going to find all of the access points. A lot of these will be my neighbors but um, a few of these will be mine. And that should have it, yes. So we're going to exit out of the scan now. And we're going to list the access points. So our target is going to be the network, uh, which is my name, Jackson, and its associated number here is zero. So we take note of this, we exit out, and we go to the select option. We There's a bunch of options, but we're going to pick AP naturally. Uh, and we are just going to input the corresponding number and click save. And now we can exit out of this. Next step, we are going to sniff, uh, if I can find it, sniff. And it is going to be a PMKID sniff. We are going to use the targeted active list which is basically going to attempt to de-authenticate all of the devices on the network and capture the handshakes. So it's going to be a four-way handshake. Uh, I have another laptop here, which I'm just going to you know, disconnect and connect, um, see if it can just get some Wi-Fi traffic happening here. Um, it looks like I'm successfully being de-authenticated. We're going to give this a minute just to run um, be able to capture everything and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, this should be good. Now we're going to exit out and now we're done with that section. So in now you need to connect your flipper to QFlipper and you're going to go into the file manager uh, into the SD card and you are going to find app data. Uh, let me see where that's, oh, I'm already into app data. So you'd normally be here. You'd choose SD cards. Uh, you would go to apps data. And then you're gonna look for Marauder and open that. And then you're gonna go into PCAPs. All right, so now we have this one. We are gonna click download. And we're just gonna save that to the downloads folder. Next step is to open up Wireshark and navigate to the downloads folder here. And we're going to drag and drop this file into Wireshark. Uh, you'll sometimes get this error, the capture file appears to have been cut short in the middle of the packet. That's fine, you can ignore that. Now we're gonna apply, oh, my computer's dying a bit. We're gonna apply, if it will let me, the Eopol filter and we're just going to make sure that it has indeed captured a full four-way handshake which it has which once we have that we are good to go on the next step which is to open up a Chrome browser and go to this URL we're going to choose that file and basically what we're doing here is we are converting it into a format that makes Hashcat happy and will actually work. So we're gonna download this file. I'm gonna go to home. Uh, we're gonna go and just refresh our downloads. And we're going to, excuse me. We're gonna drag this file into the folder that has Hashcat in it. Now we'll open up Hashcat and we'll just find that file. Um, where is it? Am I blind? Uh, there it is, okay. 
So we are going to, just for convenience's sake, we're going to rename this to Jackson. My screen recording cut out there, but uh, we just rename it to jackson.ht22000. And now we're going to hit the the part of File Explorer where you get the, the file path. We're just going to type in CMT. And that's going to open up a lovely command window in that location. Now we are going to use the following commands. Hash cat. Uh, you can ignore this next bit. This basically just makes it ignore the pop file. Because uh, I've already cracked this hash, it won't try and do it again. So this is just for demonstration purposes. You can ignore this part. Uh, pop file dash disable. So you would just ignore that and go on from here. So it'd be hash cat. And then you would do, oh, excuse me, hang on, I forgot a bit. Uh, it would be hashcat dash m dash m, oh my days, 22,000. I'll disable, which you can ignore. Uh, it won't make too much of a difference because you, I assume, haven't cracked this hash before unless you have been attacking my Wi Fi. Um, the next step is we select the file, so it would be jackson.hc22000, and then our word list, which in my case is top10m, top10million.txt, and we're just going to hit enter. So now, as you can see, Hashcat has successfully run, and if we scroll back up, you can see that it has indeed successfully cracked my Wi-Fi password for that network. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you got some value out of this video. Uh, please remember, your command would not look like this, just for reference, because I know you guys will probably get confused with the pop file disable. The actual command you would run is hashcat-m22000 and then you would do your file name, so jackson.hc22000, and then your word list, top10m.txt. It's pretty simple, um, but as you can see, if I run it, it doesn't show anything. I would have to do hashcat-m22000, jackson.hc22000, and then top10m.txt dash dash show and then it's actually going to show me the hash but you know running it the other way gives you a more realistic view of the output you're going to get from hashcat and uh yeah that'll be all for today thank you guys for tuning in and peace